Yeah, some old guy coding again today, and, uh, you know, this last week I was poking around on YouTube and I fell across this um, tested video from Tested about this gentleman, his name is Brian Mix, that uh, uh, rebuilt this uh, Burroughs 205 computer uh, so that it looked like um, the prop in Lost in Space. And I did a little more searching and I found this site, Starring the Computer, which is another one really interesting. All these different old computers and where are the uh, uh, movies and shows that they played with. And if we go down to that Burroughs 205 right here, you can see it was in Batman, uh, a computer wore tennis shoes, uh, Angry Red Planet, Fantastic Voyage, Lost in Space, you know, just endless places. Even some uh, relatively new ones down here, even in the century. Uh, I thought I saw one, but oh yeah, yeah, this one right here. 2001 but uh, you know pretty cool stuff and watching those lights blink when I was growing up and uh, watching all of these old movies you know uh, Lost in Space and Batman and I thought hey I'd like to have one of those but of course you know obtaining a, a real case for a Burroughs 205 is probably difficult nowadays if not expensive so uh, we're not going to do that we're going to take a little different approach if you go out here to these uh, this uh, group of space props, Lost in Space pa space props, I think there's a B205 fan page out there. I can't remember exactly where I went, but I found some drawn plans with the dimensions of uh, the B205, um, uh, the size of these plates, the whole size, even the uh, chamfer, as he mentions in this video on, on the little uh, uh, light outputs here. Really cool stuff. And I thought, hey, I can 3D print a scale model of that. So that's what we're going to look at today. It's, it's still a work in progress. So we'll see how far we can get. I'm currently working on some of the circuits uh, in here too, just to drive the LEDs. And, and that uh, also spawned me to try to make some uh, uh, routed uh, PCB uh, printed circuit boards on the uh, mostly printed CNC. So that's a whole other series that uh, is coming up. I've got some uh, prep already done downstairs, and I've got uh, some copper clad boards coming today with some bits, so we'll see what kind of trouble we can get into, and uh, we'll let you know how that goes. So, let's go ahead and get into the process that I used uh, to, to do this, and uh, there's some wonderful free diagrams out there uh, somewhere attached to this group, uh, free drawings and pictures and lots of great stuff. So. First off, I encourage you to, if you're a fan of Lost in Space or any of those old shows, to take a look at this video, and I'll put a link below. I'll do my best to remember to do that this time. And, and Starring the Computer is another wonderful site. So certainly take a look at that too. Uh, off we go. So these are some of the diagrams that uh, were downloadable off of the B205 uh, fan page out there for free. Uh, they show diagrams of the buttons and uh, many of the things that were on the front panel there. Uh, we may not be able to recreate all these to be uh, functional at uh, scale, but we'll certainly give uh, do our best to give it a try. <coughs> so here's the overall dimensions. It's 33 and 3 quarters inches wide, an uh, eighth of inch uh, sheet metal, and uh, all the dimensions here and the, and the slope of uh, 10 degrees there uh, all gives you an idea of uh, what it should come out like. And uh, here's a look at some of the cover plates for uh, where the uh, readouts come through. And uh, as we mentioned before, it, uh, somewhere here it even mentions the um, uh, 1.5 millimeter chamfer around the, around the bulbs. So. Cool stuff. All the information's here that you need. As you can see, there's uh, several different of uh, these uh, groupings that uh, with, with place that go over the top of them um, for uh, for different functions for whatever was on the uh, the computer or the Burroughs computer. And this is an interesting image here. Uh, it doesn't show the scale, but um, this is actually the front panel and it's inclined by uh, five degrees off, I think it's five degrees if I remember correctly, off of the, um, the front edge here. So uh, I believe that's what it was, but it's, it's another measurement. They don't give you that value, but you can certainly figure it out in, uh, in Fusion. Along with, uh, there's the front panel. You can import this in Fusion. So you can import uh, some of these things as canvases, some of these images as canvases. So there's one that I had imported. 
and scaled according to the dimensions that were on here and then use this as a template to uh, uh, create um, those, those covers. And this one should be another one here. Let's go ahead and enable that one. And find in window. Sure, and this is the, the front panel one that I use to uh, locate all the holes in the little screw holes to, to mount the front and uh, spots for switches. Although at scale, I'm going to have to make those holes a little bit bigger. But, so what I did next is once I got all these parts, and uh, it originally didn't have a back panel, but I wanted to be able to cover things up and back, and it was open on the bottom in here, but I, I closed it up. Uh, if somebody wants to create a hole to run uh, power or whatever they want, they certainly can. I will eventually put this out on Thingiverse once uh, once it looks like it's going to work okay for me. Um, so once I did uh, get it all sort of organized here, I figured, well, let's start off with a you know 25% uh, um, scale, and uh, it just uh, was a bit too small. Uh, to be useful, yeah, quarter scale, but I left it in there for future reference. Then I went to a 34% scale. I'm trying to fit this on the uh, 300 by 300 bed of a uh, lull spot, and that fit, but just barely. I didn't feel like I had enough tolerance on there to to mess up, so I actually decreased a little bit and went to a 30% size here, and that one prints nicely. Uh, everything seems to fit quite well. Uh, LEDs, 3 millimeter LEDs will push through those uh, light holes uh, with a little bit of force. You know, they just kind of snugly slide in there. Uh, probably wouldn't be bad to just uh, uh, increase the size on those just a little bit uh, so that they pop in. Uh, but you'll see more about that later on. So I did um, print the front panel and I also printed the main box. And this is the way I printed my first copy. So there it is with supports. Um, it, it's not as bad as it looks. I mean, the material cost, uh, it's not that bad. I got a bad uh, high value in there too for uh, uh, a very expensive filament that we can get a, a lot less. So let's go ahead and take a look by cutting this down. So you can see that uh, bottom part, uh, the finish part disappears there and we're into a bunch of support material underneath. So just to give you an idea what that looks like. I did also or, uh, add a, um, a back mounting area. Let's find fusion here again. Yep, there we go. So I also did add a uh, back mounting area for this back panel that uh, they had some sort of uh, some little uh, tabs to put screws through, I think, for some sort of a back panel. Maybe there is a back panel on the old ones. I assume there would be. It wouldn't be exposed, obviously, for uh, you know, for the computer system. But I, I just took uh, you know uh, uh, artistic liberty with that. <laughs> Let's call it. And it does not match uh, the back part. Does not match the uh, nor the front part. Probably here where it attaches um, inside the case here. One problem with the print that I did find, I, I ran one of these through, and uh, the is first issue I found was that uh, this little bend here, let's let some of it build up here again. There we go. This little uh, 90 degree turn here is very weak. It needs some sort of a chamfer in there, even though the original did not have such a thing. Um, I think we're going to have to add a little bit of a chamfer around this edge here just to help strengthen that joint up a little bit. So at that point, once I had the case down and fairly functional, I wanted to start thinking about the electronics. So let's take a quick look at that and see where I started out there. And if you watch that video up front that I mentioned uh, with that builder, Brian Mix, um, he discusses a, a lot about um, the, uh, the history of it and uh, apparently the prop makers uh, tore the guts out of the machine and uh, wired it up so that there's a set number of patterns and ran all those patterns off of a sequential switch. Uh, it's basically a motor with a bunch of uh, micro switches around it essentially um, that click in, on and off at various times. <coughs> So Brian Mix uh, went through the process of learning those patterns, and he's wired up his machine, as many others I'm sure have. 
to run those specific patterns. But I think it would be interesting in this day of Arduino not to limit ourselves to just that set. Uh, in order to do this, I've got uh, a chip coming that will drive 16 LEDs or 16 servos. Uh, I forget the name of the chip, I'll put it up here. So basically, I'm going to do these in groups of 16. Uh, obviously, that's a group of 16 right there. Some that are going to be spread across, but a lot of them. At least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of these will be a regular 16 by 16. And then the others we can work out uh, in some other fashion. Some special cards. So I, I printed out this little LED uh, template here just to kind of help line those guys up to the holes. And in case uh, we're zoomed kind of far out right now, so just to show you what the LED looks like in one of the holes, it's right there. <clears throat> and these are white LEDs. Uh, they came in this case of uh, 1,000 LEDs of several different colors, but uh, you know, you've know you got 200 whites in there, and it was going to cost me about that much to get just 200 whites. So I figured, what the heck, I'll buy the whole box. Hopefully uh, we don't have a yield issue uh, here. Let me go ahead and grab a prototyping board. Let's go ahead and put that through one of the pins here if I can. Let's see if I can get it to go through there. Probably too much stuff in the way, but there. Probably way brighter than I need. I probably need more of an opaque plastic to uh, to be the front panel. Maybe we can tune it down a little bit too, so it's not quite as bright. We certainly will be able to do that with that chip that's coming. And I cut up these little boards to perfectly fit a, uh, a four by four array in there. Um, the horizontal holes line up with the perf board very nicely, but the vertical holes do not. I've got one little tool here that's going to be used for uh, just spacing the LEDs off the board. Pins that I'm going to use. Yep. And then this is the uh, LED uh, adjuster tool. I have it upside down. And this is going to... Might be hard to see. Hopefully it will be uh, shaping, uh, bending the leads in the directions they need to go from the perf board to fit into the little uh, <coughs> uh, template panel. So we'll see what happens here. We will give it a try. And uh, from the chip uh, that I've seen online, it seems like uh, often it's used where the positive lead which is the longer lead, of course, is connected uh, to 5 volts. And then the uh, negative leads are switched. So let's go ahead and start here. happy with how it's turned out so far. So, thanks for watching.